car. Hey, buddy. What's going on, Jason? Hey, how's the video coming in tonight? I worked on my internet today and put one of those extenders in. Is it clear? Can you hear me good? Break a break or one nine. <laughs> Got some great topics we're going to get into tonight. We're going to get into uh, good so far. Good. We're going to get into Ed Lee Scallon's pamphlet that he wrote. And uh, what's up, Danielle? Jason. We're going to get into tonight is uh, mineral, vegetable, and animal life, the petrol motion holder. Written by Ed Lee Scallon at Rockgate Homestead, USA. When was it written? The bottom says copyright 1945. Written by Ed Lee Scallon. Great topic. We're going to get into this stuff. You're going to love it. Let me uh, come over here and see what we just built the pressure up to. So I got all these capacitors. I built up a pressure. So you can imagine... Here's the voltmeter, and as soon as I connect this, it just dissipates it real quick because it puts a load on there. So it, uh, okay, so it's got 260 volts. See how it drops? It's dropping like a lot of capacitors. 200, that's DC. Yo, out of in the house. So let's stop it from bleeding. Okay. So I can build up the pressure, and that got me thinking. So I had to jump back into some of Ed Scallon's uh, pamphlets and, and get into it a little bit. Now, I want you guys to hear me out because this makes so much sense. So right now, I got pressure. This is what we're dealing with, is pressure. And what do I mean by pressure? It means I got a bunch of electrons bound up. I got a difference in potential, and we're dropping quick, 140 volts, hard, added up to 330 volts. So the more capacitors I add, I can, I can bring the voltage up. So that got me thinking to the center. Now I'm saying, okay, we're gonna go, we're gonna have to focus on the center. And what do I wanna do in the center is I wanna create a electrostatic field. Now, why do we want to create electrostatic field in the center? Well, you have the wheel. The wheel is really not making electricity like I'm doing right here, as far as a bunch of volts. Look, we're down to 50 something volts. And um, we're not looking at it that way. We're looking at Something a little different here. So in the center here, we have neutral. And I'm going to get the compass and kind of let it work its way. Let's check the compass because I know heading towards that corner brick, that's that's W north. Those compasses. One could do. There it goes. Somehow it's just caught. Hey, you guys hear about that? I read that today in the news that uh, our North Pole is heading towards Siberia. You guys didn't read about that. So the compass is really, wow. Let's, uh, let's, let's, let's check the compass hasn't been open. So, our magnetic north on the planet Earth is moving. And it's moving, I notice, further to the right. It keeps going this way. So I got to check where they've been saying, saying that uh, Siberia is going to be the North Pole. But it, it, listen, it kind of makes sense. Think, think about what, what is really happening. All right, so you have a magnetic north. And then you have your axle north and south. So who created the axle north and south? You follow me? 
So the axle north and south would be man creating something that he can have a fixed reference point. You guys follow me? A reference point. So man's reference point is what how it's spinning. And they'll use the top and the bottom as their axial. The Earth's magnetic field is, is moving. Well, that's because, you guys are going to love this, that's because this Earth, Earth flips its poles and we're moving past the, the we're moving past the point to where it's going to flip. And this is here. I'm just going to have to say it. This is here where I think mankind's kind of wiped out and start over again. And we are come back, forth, back over, back over, back over, back over. Now, will mankind disappear because the Earth is going to flip around its poles? I think eventually something's going to go bad because the the um, the flipping of all that magnetic poles is going to cause the weather to variate. And that means if you find in coconut shells and palm leaves frozen in Alaska, that means that at some point everything is being flipped. All right, but let's talk about that because Ed talks about sphere sphere magnet. And in a sphere magnet, you can take the pole out. You can change the poles. So, wow, to me, that's a planet in the solar system that doesn't have an axial point because the pole's been stripped out of it. If you rotate the moon, other thing uh, you could talk about because in reference to our top fingers, north pole, bottom thumb, south pole, according to how we sit, say 30 degrees, axle like that, that moon is always fixed going around us. All right, then we're just taking ourselves around, say if this was the sun, we're traveling around the sun. Now you also have the sun traveling through space at 70,000 kilometers per second. So it's moving through space and then it's having like this resistal resistance kind of uh, the planets are just kind of around. I would think that they're just doing this around this kind of vortex. Okay. And that vortex and the sun solar system has not only one not only uh, one solar system, but their mirrored image. So it's a mirror image of a epicenter. And that epicenter would be the thing that created it. And then from there, it has a mirror image of itself. And that's how I look at everything. So probably how I got into this Edley Scallon, uh, uh, Wilhelm Reich, to my, then Tesla, then Edison, then I, then the other boys back in the 1700s, Faraday and all them guys, Volta, um, uh, Hertz, um, and all those guys are way before my time and way before all of our time. And, and they don't, I don't feel connected to them, but I feel connected to Ed. I feel connected to, uh, uh, Wilhelm Reich. And those two main connections I have, and I do like my Tesla experience. So those three main experiences, I can't leave my boy Tesla, those three main inputs in my life has brought me into like, why are we just using a, a iron, the absorption of iron, the, the, uh, the absorption of the magnets going in the iron and then pulling them out of the iron through copper is primitive, even though it's what it is, it's primitive. So this is fascinating because we're going to 
head to the center of the wheel, the electrostatic situation. And the electrostatic that we're going to add to the center of the wheel is going to bring us into a place to where we're dealing with a couple hundred thousand volts on top of having an electromagnetism. But I want to use the, the wheel itself as a driving mechanism. You can see how we're doing little parts, right? I already established we can get as many volts stored as we want. The greatest thing I found that never came across was um, this guy that's on YouTube. Uh, he's a Tesla guy. His name, uh, his uh, Tesla channel, uh, Abrams Lab. And uh, Abrams Lab, um, he pretty much got me excited and, and watched his videos over and over again. I, I learned a lot about Tesla. So these beer bottles are one nanofarads a piece. Now, you're not looking to really conserve anything when you use these. You have to be dealing with high voltage, and this is 60 milliamps. So the other ones that are less are 30 milliamps. And what I realized with 15,000 volts, whether it's 30 milliamps or 60 milliamps, that you'll double your output by just doubling your your um, your amperage, so but your volts stay the same. So you have to look around and go back over here and say, okay, why the heck are we only dealing with what we have? I mean, iron, magnets, copper, bam, that's how we make electricity. This here is 24 poles, right? So it's making an AC wave. The AC wave is coming through here. We can take that, we can take that, and what we do is we concentrate it in the iron. And then the iron is not, really not north or south. The iron is just a stored of the north and south, if you want to call it. And to me, that's probably bullshit, because the north and south, it's, it's our version of what we want to uh, uh, kind of make it out to be north and south. What you really have is an energy that's directional, that becomes, it's split, it, you split in the energy. It's like splitting atoms. You're splitting it. You, you are literally splitting the damn stuff. So if you look at it in that manner, you're splitting the atoms, basically, and, and pretty much you're splitting them in, so they're in the iron, and then you're coming out of the iron is what we do now is that we send them through copper, and man knows that copper is directional. So it will send one pole one way, one pole the other way. So you have a chase in itself. It always has to be chasing itself. So we come out and go into capacitor. Check this out. So now we're going to step it up freaking a million fold over because... The greatest thing is what Ed wrote in Minerals, Vegetables, and Animal Life. And to tell you the truth, you have to read shit back over and over. And we're just going to touch base on a few things. <clears throat> and through that few things, you're going to see why electrostatic and electromagnetism are one of the same. And how you, you're, when you have volts, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to say it five times. The more volts you have, the more amperage you're going to have. When you look at this, it has a lot of volts and very little amps. They're limited. They're limiting the current. The current's limited. That means that they're dampening down the current. So that means that this has a DC uh, tightening of going on into the AC because DC has a saturable reactor. DC controls the current on AC. So that's what would be knocking that down. So if you eliminate that, this is what you're going to have here.
This is the elimination of that center tap. No center tap, man. Let's get into this. This shit's fucking for real. Watch my... Oh, I'm sorry about that. All right, we're going to get into this, and we're going to talk about two things here. We're going to start off with, Ed says right here. Well, this is minerals, vegetables, and animal life. He gives in to what is life, mineral life, is to hold mineral matter together. Vegetable life is to hold vegetable matter together and increases in volume. Animal life is to hold the animal matter or flesh together. Now, I, I can dig this. I'm pretty sure you guys can dig this, too, because who are you, what you're made of, and what's holding you together? What's up, Jason and Al? So he says right here, and these are just a few things I'm going to touch on. So I want I want to get into your minds tonight. Whoever's watching this or will ever watch this, you're gonna you're gonna think. It says the volume give motion to the muscle. The base. The base of life is the north and south pole magnets. The magnets are indestructible. Every period of material life goes through two periods, construction and deconstruction period. But life itself is indestructible. Life has no beginning and no end. The sun is a living and in a destruction period. And the earth is in a construction period. In the sun, only mineral mineral life exists, but on earth, minerals. Um, but on earth, mineral. Wait, what the hell? In the sun is living in a destruction period of the earth, and the construction period, and the earth is living in a construction period. Deconstruction, construction. In the sun, only mineral life exists, but earth. Minerals, vegetables, animal life exist. When one form of life goes through its destruction period, the life leaves the matter and goes elsewhere. For instance, when zinc and the battery is taken in parts by acid, the north and south pole magnets that held the zinc together, they leave the zinc in the right connections are made. They will come out and the battery, come out of the battery. Then they can be used for other purposes. I can run those north and south pole magnets in my perpetual motion holder. Then they will produce per perpetual motion. And when I want to use the same magnets for other purposes, I can make a flash of light from that. Now you can see that zinc went dead and the north and south pole magnets held together. They did not die but they escaped and went somewhere else. The drawing in the front cover, which he's talking about this, the drawing on the front cover, perpetual motion hold, see how he has it set up. And this is what he's talking about with the keeper box. So let's go back to that section. Let me get to even better. So the perpetual motion holder, sorry about my reading, because I'm trying to, I'm trying to read through my phone and it's freaking my ball, my eyes up. And then I'm, I'm jumping out of my phone and it's kind of, it just screwing me up. So I apologize. Now, so the drawing in the front of the cover, the perpetual motion holder I made, if you, you run the north to south pole magnets from a car battery, the car battery is stronger than zinc battery. And those two coils, while the laminated iron crossbar is across the iron bar prong, and fill the iron bar orbits with magnets, then the whole magnets will never stop running around. They will run around until the crossbar is pulled off. North and South Pole magnets came out of the battery's positive terminal, and the South Pole came out of the battery's negative terminal. So he right there admits he's using laminate. Remember we talked about lamination. So my... PMH that I built out of the thing is not laminate, it's solid bar, but laminate. We talked about these laminates. Very, very, very strong magnetism. Laminates, very, very strong. Let's get into good stuff here. So, 
If you put the perpetual motion holder north, pole prong is put east. The south pole prong west and the elevate the crossbar center up to the south pole vertically hanging magnet, then the magnet will swing south. And when the crossbar center is elevated up to the north pole vertically hanging magnet, then the magnet will swing north. The crossbar's ability to swing north and south pole magnets off the center will remain as long as the crossbar is not disturbed. It has little power. I want you guys to realize this. It has little power, but it could be made stronger by making bigger dimensions. From the above experiment, you can see that perpetual motion holder can act as a living thing. It knows which way to swing the magnet. This shows if more magnets are added to a living thing, then it can perform things it could not do before. The same is true concerning our body and everything else. The surplus magnets that are real life, magnets in general are indestructible. For instance, you can burn wood or flesh. You can destroy the, your body, but you cannot destroy the magnets that held together your body. It will go elsewhere. Iron has more of the magnets than wood. Every different substance has a different number of magnets that hold the substance together. Bada bing. And that's where I want to stop and get into my electromagnetic, electrostatic. So, one thing I've learned with my electrostatic experiments is that you can get some good uh, movement, um, electromotive force, I'll say. All right, so if I was to put, I want to build in the center of this. This is going to be something that's going to be like a heartbeat. And this is how I want to explain this. Here's my fist tight, like a heart, okay? Then it expands, then it contracts, okay? So this electrostatic center is going to be a contraction and expansion. Contraction, expansion. The expansion is going to be a lot of freaking volts. It ain't going to be junking around with 300 volts, a lot of volts. I, I, I want to get it up to almost at least 750 to a, a million volts. And how are we going to do that? Well, I use the materials. That's what Ed's saying. The materials. Copper strips, good. Aluminum strips, good. Brass strips, good. Bismuth strips, very, very good. Lead, great. Zinc, super great. These are all the things that he's telling us that all these elements, that each one has different. If, if, if bismuth is number 83, it means it's got 83 electrons, 83 protons, 83 neutrons. So basically, you can go over to lead. Now, lead's only one over from bismuth. 82 electrons, 82 protons. Let's go over here. Let's look at um, let's look at copper, number 29. 29 electrons, 29 protons, 29 neutrons. So 29, let's go over to a higher one, like bismuth is 83. So there's 83 electrons in them. But to me, that's like a damn cannon. I mean, it goes up and up from there. So this is how we're going to do this. We're going to create, we're going to create electrostatic heart. The electrostatic heart is going to be something that's going to be compressing and expanding. When it expands electrostatic, everything on the outside here is getting pulsed out like the damn sun. It's going to be layers. So we'll start off with the bottom being attached to the wheel and the wheel itself will turn. All right. Now the next one will be in the wheel, but it won't turn. It's going to be fixed. So you're going to have one layer turning, one not. You're probably asking yourself, wait a minute. How's he going to make one turn, one not turn? Well, the one that's attached will be turning. 
I'm going to put a shaft in here, and I'm going to put these um, shaft and then barrels. Okay, and then each one will be fixed to the shaft, which will be turning. All right, so the turning one fixed to the shaft. The ones that are not turning, there's going to be layers. It's going to be like 12 layers that's going to come up. All right. And the ones that aren't turning is going to be on a barren. The barren is going to be like a gyroscope, so where it's going to have electromagnetic field on two ends like a polar. So I'm going to set it up to where the poles line up to the magnetic north and magnetic south of our planet. So when this spins and you get this going to... It's amazing that Ed even talks about 2,000 RPMs he talks about. He mentions 2,000 RPMs for a reason. So we're going to see what 2,000 RPMs are with what I have. And we're going to take the center, and we're going to make an electrostatic field in the inside. We're going, to, we're going to have this where it's expanded and contracted, expanded and contracted, expanded and contracted. This is multi layers. There's, there, this is, I would call this a, um, it's a, a whole array of, of um, different circuitries. So, for instance, the, the main pole starts from when this passes the PMH. Okay. And we only have one PMH running right now. The other one's stripped down. A damn wound 1,500 turns. Somehow one wire got crimped, killed it, killed the whole PMH. I had to strip some bitch out. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video tonight. You can see that building the pressure up. Um, really is obtainable. And with adding electrostatic pressure, it's going to bring this into a different place because now we're able to step up the voltage. We can control the amperage by adding a DC reactor, a satchable reactor, in a sense, to where I just take a, um, let me see, it's pretty easy to make them, too. If you guys ever make them in your workshop, you just use a... A, um, a ferrite core with wire going around it and you put DC in it and you make the DC variable and you can control the AC current going through the wire. So I, I believe when you, we set up the, the pipes with the underground systems with the capacitors up top and you add the compression of the inside of the wheel, you're, you're literally making a pump. And uh, I'm going to have to just call it an earth pump, the earth pump, because it's you're, you're this is how you tap to the ground. This is literally I can't see any other way. I'm going to have to give my boy over here a little piece. This is how. Am I working on levitation? Not really. Am I working on lighting up the garage? Not really. Why not? Because I'm stuck on the wheel. And at least the wheel, whether or not Ed did this or didn't do it, I'm making the wheel do this. And this is just things that I see. So I add the electrostatic in here. Ed talks about in Mineral Life that everything has different uh, concentration of magnets. So in the neutral section here, and this is one thing I want you to see too. Let me... Move that over, move that over, get this out, spin it a little bit. And, um, the thing that I want you to notice is that, uh, well, actually, no, let me take this, because I want to get inside of it. I want to, I want you to see what happens to the compass. Um, another compass going over here. We'll just see what happens to the compass. So right now, this compass is really where north is, because there is a north of my wall. So 
whoever's keeping track of where a real magnetic north is moving, it's been moving across my garage for a while, for quite a few years. I didn't realize that. So the wheel stopped because I stopped it. So I'm going to go ahead and, and start moving the wheel. I, I took the centerpiece out because I'm going to get inside of it. Let me just get it moving. I want you to see that the gyroscope ability inside the wheel is phenomenal. Well, look, so the magnet's all turning around and the compass is still staying straight magnetic north. Now you can see I bring it to the outside of the wheel, the compass is being reflected by the magnets flopping back and forth, right? You get to the center, look, it stays true magnetic north. That's why you bring in the electrostatics. That's why the center and the electrostatics is going to be phenomenal. It's going to be phenomenal. The electrostatics in the center is going to be like the heartbeat because it's able to now, if I build this layer by layer by layer and have it to where the collectors and the brushes, the brushes don't have to be so much on in between each one, but long as one is moving by the other, what will happen is just like two North Pole magnets together, they'll be repelling. Well, when this repels from plate to plate, I'm going to, I guess what I'm going to do is you see how many layers of magnets there are? As I come up, I'm probably going to have probably two layers of, of material. Now, I'm, these are just ones I had from my homemade, uh, Van de Graaff, or not Van de Graaff, my Wimsource machine. So I made this. But what I want to do is make it of different material. So each plate will be a plate of different material. So I'll take bismuth, melt bismuth on there. Where's my big plate? So here you go. I made these big plates a while back. That's bismuth that I melted on there. Put these bismuth plates. And I got two of them. All right. So what we're going to do is, is make different plates with different materials. And as I said, if you look at the elements and if you look at the concentration of electrons and protons per, now the weight of it, the atomic weight, you've got to look at that and then look at the weight you have. You can almost multiply and see how many electrons are stored in that particular element. So these elements here, when one's, what will happen is when one is, say the one in the bottom stationary, the one passes it like this, this is what it's going to be doing. So the same thing that everybody's noticing is happening here. You're, you're moving a magnet by a piece of iron. All right, so what's different between that than moving just materials by each other? It doesn't matter what the material is. Like Ed says, in Minerals Life and in that brochure that the difference is that some have concentration of electron or concentration of more atoms than the other one does. So we'll use the different elements to make a compression. And this is where the Wilhelm Reiki comes in because this is going to be made of an organic, inorganic material that's going to be layered coming up, coming up, coming up, coming up, in organic and organic material. Why do I say that? And what is organic material? What is inorganic material? So what do I mean by that? So what I mean is inorganic material will be elements of that are non-metallic. Anything that's metallic will be a inorganic material. And inorganic materials uh, attract and repel, and uh, organic materials only attract they do not repel and i think that's where the um uh, it comes into to where the energies had were equal and they had one of them had to surrender in order for life to begin this is this is kind of my funny little taste on how how things really are and and that's how everything is like oscillatorial always got a frequency always got something banging back and forth but what i'm saying is you get into this here so what will happen is every time you get organic, inorganic material, 
if one's only repelling and one's attracting and repelling, that you can c concentrate that. And that's our concentration. And that will be the concentration on the inside because what we'll do is we'll build um, the inner layer to be the, um, the uh, which is, which basically the inner layer is the, uh, is the wheel itself. Because if you take organic material on the outside, and then we're going to trogon energy, okay? And we're going to organ energy, Wilhelm Reich, truthfully in my heart, I believe his heart was in a great place, regardless of what they did to him. They shamed him, burned all his books. I wasn't into all that stuff. But the part of it that he understood from his one experiment that he discovered in his basement, when it all kind of glowed in the dark, that everything had energy. And with everything having energy, he realized that you could you could um, concentrate it. And when you concentrate it, it's stored energy there. And the same thing that I want to reproduce because we could make an inward pressure. So we want the pressure to be like, like for instance, you got earth surface, okay, where we stand on. Then you have a pressure there, right? Then, then you have go up, and then you have the outer atmosphere and you got a pressure there or space. Say space minus 30 and say ground level is 30. Just pretty much is what it is, right? Give or take. There's your, your humidity or whatever change. Then you have the center core pressure again. So we're on the surface in the middle of two different pressures. So think about that. We're, 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 we're like, we're living in a place that's in a neutral because you have an outer pressure and a lower pressure, and then in the middle you have like a dielectric. Like, you, you follow me, guys? You have a, like a dielectric, so you have like a neutral place. So when you take the organic, inorganic materials and layer them, you can create where where it starts from one end and it keeps moving and gets trapped in. Here's my hand. Here's the energy. It gets trapped in, trapped in, trapped. It can't come back out because when you layer organic and organic material, it only can come inward and not come out. And that's where you build pressure up with the wheel. So I believe the wheel is going to be turning itself because what the inside is, do, is going to do is going to create a, a, not only a pressure, but it's going to create a twist. And the twist itself is going to take the neutral part here and make this just like the outer crust of the earth. So it'll, it'll just want to spin because of the inward pressure that's inside of the wheel. Hope you guys um, had a good night. Leave your comments. Um, I'm looking forward to going back and looking at your comments. So and I'll, I'll, I'll reply to your comments. You know, it's it's in the mag in the magnetic world, it's all related, guys. And the electrostatic just been shunned off to the side. And the electrostatic is really, you know, the 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 sword, the the lightning, and and and, and everything else is 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 where it has to go to. And that's what I'm getting at. Is you have to if if you really want to create something that's that's brilliant. You have to, you have to, a couple things you have to know is what's creating the energy, where the energy is stored. They say motion, uh, energy in motion, uh, energy not in motion. You, you know, what do they say? Uh, um, ma uh, matter in motion stays in motion, matter, whatever they say. But you get the point where if, if, if you're not, moving things, the energy stays still. And that's where the ground has hollow spots in it, has different materials. And the key thing, I'm going to end this conversation tonight. You guys are going to love this. The key thing is water. Water is saturated and moving like rivers through the whole planet. Water moves the energy. So if you were if you were to take you guys are gonna love this. If you were to take a stone 
This happens to be a magnetic stone. If I float this, it'll go to magnetic north. But you know what? I am also do that so we can keep track of the beautiful stone. If you take the stone and you put this in water, and the water is moving by the stone, it will be sharing electrons with the water. The water will be moving energy through this stone. Bring them up, guys. Love it. You know, everything you guys put up, I read, I get deeper into it. You're moving energy when it's going through water. And if you look into the uh, Egyptian stuff, the pyramids, and there was water at the basin, the, the denial of, of, of the Great Pyramid, no longer there. It takes water. So it's water has a lot to do with, with, with just taking matter and creating power. So if you have a creek in your backyard, you got something moving, get out there and start experimenting is all I got to say, because it, it's, it's the thing that's loaded with, it's, it's, it's a loaded power source that we just don't know how to tap. Nobody knows how to tap. If you know how to tap it, leave your damn comments because I'm just putting it out there that it's tappable. And I got a creek in my backyard about 100 feet away. It's not moving all the time, but it's, it's, it's moving most times. So as you take the materials, you layer it, you start moving it by each other, you're going to have forced uh, uh, pressure from one matter, one element to the other. Then you're going to, you're going to have to stack the, the organic, inorganic material in whatever you use for the material, you have to go deep into your atomic um, uh, realm of what the material, what the element is, and what, what spin it has. Once you know what spin it has, you want to have everything spin in the same way. So you want to use elements that have the same rotational spin. If you want to get creative and you want to go op 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 opposite spin, Two things. One, we know it'll probably uh, void itself out. Or if you want to create in a, in a place in the Wilhelm Reich world to where it's like a capacitor, if you take one end of the capacitor and the other end and, and, and oppose it, you'll double the voltage. So you would double the increase of electrons that are sharing based on the pressure that you provide inside the housing itself. You guys get me? Hopefully you do. So uh, what am I doing next for you guys? Um, we're going to have PMHs all the way around. Every set is going to have a PMH. Couple of them will be electromagnetism. Uh, the, the couple of them will be uh, field magnets. Some of them will be coils. But we'll have every time this wheel goes in front of an iron, it's going to have a tough time moving. This is where your lens law comes in. This is where we're going to get a little resistance. Because every position, in, like right here, that's north. So it'll be set up here. There'll be another pin. It's another one, another one, another one, another one, another one. The key thing is the tank circuit I was talking about between the coil, PMH in front of it, and the coil in front of it, and the electrostatic plate you build that will be the, um, the tank circuit. That capacitor has the power, and the field coil doesn't, and then it flops, then all of a sudden the field coil gets the power, and the capacitor is empty. So, That'll work yin and yang, along with the electrostatic, which will be charging the inside here. Remember, everything that comes into the neutral here and starts... Well, another thing I can tell you about my electrostatics, working with my um, rubber band, uh, bandograph, that when you fill up, say, this capacitor that I built, which is multi-layered of, of aluminum, and on the inside, 
there's so many, it's so much pressure that when I touch it near my chicken stick, I can be two inches away from it and I'm getting an unbelievable quarter inch thick arc coming out. So there's so much pressure. But what I did realize is when you put something near it, you can hear it hissing out to it. So what does that mean? So that means when the pressure is inside the center here, it's going to be hissing out. So that means that these iron cores are going to be absorbing that electrostatic. And because they're magnets, what's going to happen is it's going to be created as a skin effect. The skin effect means that the iron is not going to be such a, a, a saturable material because it's already saturated from these being magnets in itself. So what will happen is that energy will have a skin effect, meaning these outside coils that are on the magnets will will be turbo boosting the iron and in the inside to have a stronger magnetic field, which therefore will come through on certain of these as collectors and certain of these as um, ones that will be helping the wheel turn. Leave your comments. Have a good night, guys. Hopefully you appreciate it.